Alright guys, Touch Grubby back again today. Hope you are all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And with the league just around the corner, there's many questions that still are lying in the air right now. Exactly what's going on with the map situation. Express is coming into the game. What does that mean for the S&D rotation? The other maps that we've been promised on the horizon, or at least have been rumoured on the horizon. What exactly is going on with them? Some more map leaks over these last couple of days. Not including the standoff and some of the other maps that we would have liked to see. But maybe some of the other maps can, oh well, take its place in some effect. Also the question around league play, right? Where is league play? What's going on with the preset classes and what does that mean for gentlemen's agreements with some more things being GA'd out of the game over these last few days. Intrigued to hear your perspective in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, a couple of things to mention. So later today sometime there's going to be some sort of announcement related to the whole CDL merchandise situation for 2021. So LAG say tomorrow, that was yesterday, so today 12pm Pacific time and uh, well Rocker say a similar thing. So I think pretty much a uh, maybe two teams or three teams a day for the next four or five days are going to be announcing what the merchandise looks like for the upcoming season. So hopefully it is pretty good and uh, well hopefully they get more discretion on to actually making some designs which will tie in more to the, the culture of their team I suppose than just the copy and paste designs we saw the CDL pump out this time last year as Crone says well February the 1st Gorillas Empire Rocker February the 3rd Phase and I imagine some other ones that maybe haven't officially announced exactly when their announcements are going to be. So yesterday the Challengers Cups concluded as Crone points out the APAC region was once again won by the Renegades, Luca, Shox, Pred, and Fighter, a 10 map series. Clearly a pretty close one this time around. The Challengers Cup number five in the European region. Lucky Journey, Nvidia, and Metals. So the, the Spanish guys getting it done here. Another reason, of course, I suppose. Maybe they were somewhat spurred on by the fact that it seems like Heretics might be getting a spot in the league next season. I definitely believe that's the case from what I've been hearing so far. It definitely seems to me that if they're going to expand to 16 teams, as I believe they will do, Heretics and a Spanish team certainly is the way to go, especially with them performing well in the Challengers Cups. In the North American region, of course, actually, was Wester we talked about yesterday, not making it to the four-peat, well, actually, the five-peat. They got the four-peat. They didn't win five in a row. That was the New York Subliners Academy. So, fair play to them. Pro Loot, Spart, Hamza, Frosty, and Saints Nato winning this one. So, they've obviously looked pretty good these last couple of weeks. Wester falling after not winning it leaves the door open for these guys to take the crown, which is pretty impressive given Diamond Con was obviously on this team for a while, gets brought up to the starting lineup. I think Spart then came into this team, and obviously, they're still performing very well in the Challenger side. And the top Challenger teams will then be performing in the Challenger's Elite Series, which is going to be running alongside the Pro League as well. So lots to talk about this season, lots of Call of Duty to be played to see who's the best team all around. I'm sure, well, some of these guys could be next up to the Pro League since, of course, it's been around a number of years. So who knows who exactly might find a spot on Subliner's starting roster at some point, if that's the direction they want to move down. Or, of course, there's always next season when expansion comes into play. So these are the overall results obtained. Esports getting second in the European region, Singularity and third North American region it was Phantom's team and uh, well team G generation with Cruz actually from New Zealand getting third place in the North American region so fair play to them and Chiefs getting the runners up in the APAC region as I suppose we could have predicted going into the weekend talk about GAs then so Assault says we've looked at this XM4 gotta go some um well definitely some questionable opinions on this the last few days my understanding is the preset classes have basically been set to this point if you guys kind of missed the announcement or it actually hasn't been announced yet so we're kind of wondering when it is going to be announced but the pros are going to be playing with preset classes this season so they can't determine their own classes before the matchups they just have to choose one of the preset ones which have been determined for them the question is also whether that's going to be a thing in league play as well are we going to be forced to use their classes but it seems like those preset classes have been determined for a while now with the xm4 in play so um yeah to my understanding the xm4 will be staying at least for the time being and hopefully it isn't going anywhere because right now we do have something of a three weapon meta which honestly i think is pretty entertaining to play and to watch but there are obviously some other things geared out of the game we saw the gung-ho ga not too long ago snipers are gone smokes are gone we've talked a fair bit about the snipers and smokes and exactly what we could do potentially to get them back into competitive play whether we have to like you know remove the aim assist or something on the snipers or whether smokes just have to be fixed before snipers are then viable because um, you could argue snipers are very strong when you can't use a smoke to actually cut off the lines of sight but as call of duty agents say a few days ago there's also an additional ga this is the entire list of gas right now it is pretty extensive as you can tell and stun grenades and frag grenades are gone i don't really understand 
understand why frags are gone because I don't really think anyone was using frags anyway to my understanding but sun grenades people were using they are very strong in this game it's very difficult to deal with and um, I can understand that like you know back in a few titles ago I remember I think it was Slasher maybe on the podcast the question was what things from previous titles would be GA'd if we were in today's environment and a lot of the discussion was around the stun grenades and something like Black Ops 3 in Black Ops 3 you had to uh, ban and protect to get rid of it anyway as most teams tended to do but Advanced Warfare stuns were very strong so clearly nowadays stuns are don't seem to be the favourites of pro players. Flashes are allowed, frags are gone though it seems. So yeah, Semtex and flashes are what people are using. It does seem on the preset classes. That's pretty much what is going to be allowed only on these on these classes of course because smoke grenades are completely gone as well. So this is the entire list if you guys aren't too familiar with it. And certainly I hope that this is the last gentleman's agreement that we do see so far this season. Right, The XM4 in my opinion is a pretty entertaining weapon to play with, a pretty entertaining weapon to watch. And these last few days it certainly must be said that it has a well increased in popularity. It's getting more and more use all across the park but at the same time I definitely feel like the Krig is still viable in certain situations some pros have been using it on certain maps I think the Checkmate for example it can certainly still be viable on Moscow as well in certain situations the Krig is better than the XM4 because of the recoil pattern that it has and certain pros are like so Octane for example that have loved the ICR in previous games they're still going to be using the Krig even on maps like Raid and such where other assault rifles are now preferring the XM4 so it does seem to me that there is still some personal preference here involved but um, yeah at the same time you can say that maybe in search and destroy as well in certain situations certain lines of sight the Krig is even better right because you're holding more long range sight lines on something like checkmate where you don't have to worry too much about the close range of being more versatile you can pick your sight lines if you're on defense and search and destroy and therefore I feel like uh, the Krig is still going to be viable in the current meta even if the XM4 is still allowed so to me I think the XM4 should stay if this is the uh, the entire list of GAs it's not um it's not the end of the world but still there is a big question mark as to whether the preset classes will arrive themselves into league play and will be forced to use what the pros are using as opposed to let's say like you really like the QBZ or something you can't actually use that in the current game because it's not in the preset classes therefore even if that's your personal preference unlucky you have to use what the pros are using there's pros and cons to that but I imagine we will get some announcements over the coming days when maybe league players officially confirmed I would imagine it would come out pretty much coinciding with the launch of the CDL certainly I do hope that is in the case of course only 11 days away now on the 11th of February it does kick off but five more days away as was a new say actually four more days from today express is coming to call of duty black ops card war we saw this announced quite a while ago now express a legendary call of duty black ops 2 search and destroy map especially was played in capture the flag in the early part of the title looking forward to this one coming back the snd maps in this game aren't exactly great you could say garrison is certainly very questionable miami i don't actually mind miami but the um, certainly the visibility on that map isn't exactly perfect so few question marks around the search and destroy maps in this game i do believe express will probably slot nicely straight into the rotation but it wasn't too long ago we heard these leaks okay standoffs coming back slums is coming back some other maps are coming back as well from previous titles and standoff especially was a major one that we were talking about right arguably the best map in cod history alongside up there with raid in my opinion i actually preferred it i think to raid all the way back in the day worked fantastic for all game modes that was played on it back in the day ctf hardpoint and search and destroy of course i would love that to be in the game as soon as possible so we can add it to the map so to at least like see if it works on certain maps see if we you know give us the choice of whether we even have a five map set if we have a six maps in the rotation maybe if the current maps are good chuck standoff in there as well i'm sure the pros would be down with it but the question is why is it taking so long right raids in the game now express is coming very soon why isn't standoff the next up right especially if the developers are trying to push these maps into the competitive rotation because we saw this leak that came out from warzone news saying that look multiplayer maps apocalypse echelon and june i think it may be uh, in america this might be pronounced echelon but um in the uk i think it's meant to be echelon but uh, yeah those are the three maps that are potentially coming back and where is standoff right like what exactly is going on here why is it taking so long to get standoff into the game as it has been rumored not too long ago and it makes sense if they're bringing back some old black ops 2 maps surely if you're bringing back raid standoff has to come back as well they did the same thing in black ops 3 with the dlc maps they remade raid and then they also remade standoff very soon after so why exactly is that not the case and you would imagine given they've just called raid raid and they've called uh, express express you would imagine other remakes would also just be called their original name so it doesn't look like they're going to be coming in season two which which might mean we're a few months away from those maps coming into the game which I suppose is somewhat unfortunate the other interesting part is this map they were discussing here a potential season 2 map very similar to Vertigo apparently from Call of Duty Black Ops 2 if you guys remember this map from back in the day it was I think it was a DLC map as well actually in this title but a pretty good map all things considered it wasn't considered to be spectacular I don't think back in the day but the Black Ops 2 maps were so good on the whole that um, this kind of maybe snuck under the radar as actually being a pretty solid map in the rotation I'm sure some of you guys remember it this is what the map looked like from a 
above. So they had a load star sitting in the middle here, which is pretty cool. But honestly, a pretty balanced map, all things considered. Definitely had a lot of nuances to it. There were many places you could fall off this map. I'm sure Clayster and New York are probably not particularly happy for this map to come into the rotation. If it is a straight up remake, then again, it's probably not going to be a straight up remake. Because as I said, they're calling it a different name. They're not calling it Vertigo, it seems right now. And um, if they were just calling it Vertigo, then obviously it would be a remake, right? So maybe they're changing some things up. Who really knows? But playing this map in public match search and destroy was honestly pretty good. People seem to like it. Maybe it could be something to consider for the rotation if it's something relatively similar. This is just a you know straight up map overview right here. So I don't really know what you guys think about this, but there was a cool little jump spot you could do. I think the A bomb was around here. Maybe the B bomb was over here somewhere or other. I think it was actually around this area, if I remember correctly, from playing at pubs search and destroy back in the day. But oh uh, well, I would much prefer standoff to be in the game than Vertigo. But oh uh, well, we would maybe just have to wait and see on that one. But at least Express is coming relatively soon to change up the map set, hopefully for the better. A couple of things to finish off the video. Breaking Point tweet this out yesterday. Only one member, only one player, has won for Optic, FaZe and 100 Thieves. Went back to back for every single team. I actually didn't realise this. It's pretty cool to see. Back on FaZe back in the day in Advanced Warfare, they won back to back. Actually, Optic Gaming, you joined in. If you guys don't remember this, this was when Karma was initially coming into the Dynasty. But I think he had some visa issues. I think it was like his American citizenship or something was being processed. Because he's, of course, originally Canadian. And then they had to summon for the team for a couple of European events. Won both of them with Optic Gaming. And then... 100 Thieves, of course, in the Black Ops 4 season wins London, and then it wins Anaheim as well. So pretty incredible stuff. Now, of course, the content curator over at 100 Thieves. In tweet here your perspective on all this stuff in the comment section. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm. I know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well, and I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care, and we'll see you next time.